Welcome to Concordia Lutheran Church. We are so glad that you tuned in today. My name is Adam Countryman, and I'm the Director of Worship Arts here at Concordia. And we're in our third week of online-only worship services. Now, churches all across the world have had to adapt how we worship together while being physically apart. And God has uniquely equipped us to do just that through the use of this technology. And the church will rise up as she has done throughout history to overcome uncertain times. As we begin worship today, we're going to sing a song together called, O Church Arise. This song has been an inspiration to churches around the world, and I pray it has meaning for you as well. Welcome to Concordia, and have a great time in worship today. Church, arise and put your armor on. Hear the call of Christ our captain. For now the weak can say that they are strong in the strength that God has given. We shield the faith and belt of truth. We'll stand against the devil's lie. An army bold whose battle cry is love reaching out to those in darkness are called to war to love the captive soul but to rage against the captor and with the sword that makes the wounded whole we will fight with faith and valor when faced with trials on every side we know the outcome is secure and christ will have the price for which he died an inheritance of nations come see the cross where love and mercy meet as the Son of God is stricken. Then see his foes lie crushed beneath his feet, for the conqueror has risen. And as the stone is rolled away, and Christ emerges from the grave, this victory march continues till the day every eye and heart will see him so spirit come put strength in every stride give grace for every hurdle that we may run with faith to win the prize of a servant good and faithful as saints of all still lie the way returning triumphs of his grace we hear their calls and hunger for the day when with Christ we stand in glory Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Coronavirus Exile Week 3. And to our Concordia family, welcome. It's good to be together today. This is going to be a very special worship service. It's the last of our series on Fear Not. But right now, I want to invite you to join me as we continue in worship together. And let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the technology that allows us to be together, even though we are spread out all over this community, all over this state, this country, and this world. Lord, bless us, send your spirit to be with us, that we would be strengthened in our faith and better prepared to live fearlessly in this world as lights to your hope and gospel. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We've gathered to sing the 
these songs Wretched sinners and desperate frauds Fully covered in Jesus' blood Free to worship the three in one Free to worship the three in one songs sons and daughters of every tongue bound together in Jesus love free to worship the three in one free to worship the three in one We do serve and worship a holy God, and so it's in his name that we begin today, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God's word tells us that even though he is holy, we are not. We fall far short of his perfect standards of righteousness. The Bible calls this sin, and yet this promise is ours when we confess our sins. Out of God's love, he forgives us of our sins. And so let's take a moment together to do that now, to confess our sins to God. Say these words with me. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We take a moment of silence now to confess those sins that we're struggling with in our hearts. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul writes these amazing words. He said, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him, in exchange, we can have the righteousness of God. Even though on our own and by ourselves we are full of sinfulness because of Jesus, we can receive God's righteousness given to us by his death on the cross because of what Jesus has done. We are made righteous in God's sight and in his name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
lovely face. I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale. My anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. You know, that is such a great promise that even in a world that feels shaky, we have the solid rock of Jesus on which to stand. You know, God's word is like a rock for us in trying times. And so we turn to his word now. This is from Daniel chapter 6. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel and his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, We will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king, and they said, May King Darius live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or any human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room, where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and he prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. You know, Daniel's bravery is an example for us in times that are scary. Daniel's faith in God will not be shaken. And for thousands of years now, the church has confessed an unshakable faith in their God. And so together, let's confess the unshakable faith that we have in our God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Speak these words with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, here's a special message just for the kids from our executive director of children's ministry, Nicole Carmines. Hey, boys and girls. It's Miss Nicole here. I'm so glad you could be with us for worship. This morning, we have another amazing story from God's Word. We're going to be learning about Daniel and his unwavering love for God. We're going to be reading out of the Beginner's Bible. So let's get started. Daniel and the Lions. Darius became the new king of Babylon. Daniel was his chief helper. Do you see the two of them standing there together? King Darius has his arm around Daniel, and they both look so happy. Well, the king's other helpers did not like Daniel. They said to the king, you are such a wonderful king. You should make a new law for the next 30 days. Everyone must pray to you only. If they disobey, they will be thrown into the lion's den. Do you see those helpers in the background? They do not look happy. They do not look kind. And I think they're trying to trick King Darius. King Darius made the new law, but Daniel kept praying to God because Daniel loved God. The king's helpers caught Daniel praying. You see Daniel in his room? He's on his knees praying to God. And in the background, you can see 
those helpers, King Darius's helpers, who are not kind, and they're spying on Daniel. They're peeking in the window. They told King Darius, now you must throw Daniel into the lion's den. The king knew he had been tricked, but he had to obey his own new law. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, but he was not afraid. He knew God would take care of him. King Darius told Daniel, I hope your God will save you. That night, the king could not sleep. He was too worried about Daniel. Can you see the king there standing on the side of the entrance of the cave? He does look worried. At sunrise, the king hurried to the lion's den. Has your God saved you from the lions? He called. Yes, answered Daniel. My God sent his angel to protect me. So Daniel returned to the palace. Then King Darius ordered everyone to honor and respect God. Do you see Daniel there in the den with the lions and everything is at peace, all is well? Because God loved Daniel and Daniel loved God. Let's say a prayer together. We're going to do an echo prayer. It'll be my turn and then your turn. My turn first. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for your love for me. Thank you for being with me in rough times. We love you, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We're so glad that you're streaming with us today in worship. Now, not only can you stream our worship services, you can also give online. If you're streaming on your laptop or on your desktop, uh, you'll notice a little give button right there on your streaming page. You can also go directly to our website, concordia.cc, to give as well. Now, not only can you give online, you can also send us your prayer requests online. All you have to do is send an email to online at concordia.cc. Let us know whether that prayer request is public or private, and we'll make sure that we add it to our prayer list. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today at Concordia. You know, we have the great privilege of coming to God and praying to him. And so that's what we do now. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this chance to worship together online. We know that we're spread out everywhere, and yet we have this promise. You are everywhere too. So no matter where we are, you are there. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the comfort and the consolation that that offers us. We're mindful today of those who are struggling with any sort of sickness, but especially with those who are struggling with coronavirus. Father, we pray that you would protect them, restore them to health, and Father, give them peace. This is a scary time. Heavenly Father, be with our medical professionals for all the hard work that they do. We pray that you would give them strength and wisdom to do their work well, to make the right decisions, especially when they're working long hours. Heavenly Father, be with our leaders, be with our governmental officials. They have a lot on their plates as well. And so Father, we pray that you would give them wisdom as well, to, to make wise choices for our communities, for our cities, for our states. 
and for our nation. Father, we know that no matter what we face, be it today or tomorrow, we have the promise that you are the Lord of heaven and earth. And so you have this all under your control. And so we can have courage. We don't have to be afraid. Father, we thank you for that. And we pray in the name of the one who secures that promise for us, your son, Jesus, our Savior. And now together we pray the prayer that he's taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a Time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. And bless the Lord, oh my soul. holy name sing like never before oh my soul I'll worship your holy name and on that day when my strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever
So this is part three, week three of our sermon series called Fear Not. And we've been looking at this incredible instruction, this command that God gives to us over and over again through the scriptures that says, don't be afraid. But the truth is, we live in a world that's filled with fear, and especially in this particular time, there are lots of reasons to be afraid. There's the the COVID-19 virus that's really nasty. There are all kinds of economic concerns. There are job concerns. There are confinement concerns. I mean, there's so much that causes us to be anxious and afraid, and yet God still says, fear not. You know, we've been pointing to this verse in Isaiah chapter 41. For the prophet says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, today as we wrap up this mini-series, we're going to really focus on the last part of that verse. That last part where God talks about the reality that, that we can be strong and we can be fearless even in the midst of trials, not because we're so strong, not because we can do it on our own, because we have a God, a God who will help us, a God who will uphold us, a God who will strengthen us, and he does that in a personal way by his own two hands. You know, this week I was talking with a friend of mine, and he was saying, I I just can't believe it. It seems like we are doing five days of work every single day. And I thought to myself, man, I feel the same way. And I'm guessing as you listen to this message, you feel the same way too. But think about it. We're having to to retool and redo all kinds of things. We're having to figure out how to live our lives in a whole different way. And we're doing that under a lot of stress. We've got the stress of sickness. You know, this COVID-19 virus is ugly and it creates all kinds of problems and there are all kinds of risks that are associated. So we've got that threat of sickness that causes stress for ourselves and for our family. We've got the threat of loneliness. I mean, being in a shelter in place, which isn't exactly what it's called in San Antonio, but it's the same thing. We're supposed to stay home, isolate from other people. And I don't care how introverted you are, you still need some interaction. We're all made for some kind of relationship. And so that can create extra stress that makes all of the things we're doing seem extra heavy, extra hard, extra exhausting. There's also the stress when we're staying home of relational kinds of stresses. In fact, I have to tell you, one of the things that has been breaking my heart and been on my prayer list, and I hope it will be on your prayer list as well, are all of those relationships that are abusive, all of those homes that are toxic, all of those places where people are at risk for domestic violence. And when when we're confined together, all of those struggles and all of those stress points get amplified. It makes people even more at risk. When you think about that and so many other things that I'm not even mentioning It makes this time a very heavy, very difficult, very frightening, and dangerous time. And that brings us to our text. Because today we're going to be talking about Daniel chapter 6. And Daniel chapter 6 is one of those stories that if you know any Bible story at all, you know the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Now my encouragement is read the whole book of Daniel. It's a short book. But go back and read chapter 6 for yourself. But, but we're going to go through this today, and we're really going to try to, to understand and come to a realization by looking at Daniel and his relationship with God. We're going to figure out how you and I can stay strong and fear not. So let's jump in. We're in Daniel chapter 6, beginning at verse 3. Now you need to understand the context here. Daniel is living in Persia. And he's living in exile. Now, not the exile like we have where it's a stay-at-home kind of an exile. Daniel is living in exile because once upon a time, the people of Israel were conquered by Babylon. And so the Babylonians had the practice of taking all of the, all of the people that they overwhelmed, taking them as captives, especially the best among them. So Daniel was taken to Babylon, but then Babylon was conquered by the Persians. And so now Daniel finds himself in this foreign land, in this new context, living in exile. But here's the really cool thing. Daniel is amazing. And Daniel has been faithful to God's word and faithful to his relationship with his heavenly father. And Daniel, in the midst of a very difficult situation, has been thriving. 
In fact, Daniel got a government job, and that government job has turned into this incredible position. And, and listen to the situation that Daniel is in, even while he's in exile. Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Now remember, Daniel's not at home. These aren't his people, and yet he has done so well. And, and King Darius has, has seen him as so valuable and so amazing that he's going to give him the highest position in all the land. That's astonishing. But even while everything is going right, there is still a huge danger that's lurking. Because again, remember, Daniel is not at home. He's not among the Israelites. There are different kinds of practice and different kinds of customs, different kinds of religious obligations for the Persians than for the Israelites. And that's really where this whole thing is going to turn ugly. Daniel's colleagues see Daniel's success and they hate him for it. In fact, they hate him so much that they're going to try to figure out how to take him down. The administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, Will we ever find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his gods? See, they see how well Daniel's doing, and so they begin to try to figure out how they can take him down. Because for them, Daniel's that guy. You know, like in school, the kid who always knows the answer. Or like the golden boy in your company that, that is rising through the ranks, you're struggling away and he seems to get every break, everything he does turns to gold. Daniel's that guy and they despise him. But the problem is, no matter how hard they try, no matter what they look at, no matter how carefully they examine what Daniel has done, he's just good. He's good at what he does. He's pure in his intentions. He is absolutely faithful in his execution of his duties. There's nothing. And so in their desperation, they turn to his faith because they figure there's got to be something that they can use against him to bring him down. And this is where it turns really, really vile and really evil. So these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, May King Darius live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. They've got to figure it out. They can't get Daniel in something he's done wrong, and so they're going to manufacture a situation where they know they can trap him. And so the text continues in verse 10. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. I gotta tell you, Daniel's an inspiration. And for hard times like these, in times where, where you and I are facing struggles and there are all kinds of anxiety, all kinds of worries, all kinds of things that, that are hard, Daniel is truly an inspiration because here's why. When people come after Daniel, when life gets hard, when life gets dangerous, when his life is on the line, Daniel lives out his faith. He does the next right thing. Doesn't balk about it. Doesn't anguish over it. He just does the next right thing. So what is he doing? Well, it's simple. Daniel has strength because he's standing strong in his faith. 
Now, when you think about that, standing strong in his faith, it means he's not panicking and he's not compromising. He doesn't cut corners, even though there there are lots of times where he might be tempted to cut corners. The reality is he doesn't do any of that. Daniel lives out his faith and he does the next right thing. And by the way, it's not just that he stands strong in his faith. Daniel stands strong in his faith and, and does what he's supposed to do, but he also doesn't do what he's not supposed to do. Now, what do I mean? Well, I mean, sometimes when you and I are, are under attack, sometimes when, when we're feeling under pressure, the temptation can be to respond back in a negative way. So somebody, somebody says something bad about the church, and so we lash out at them. We say something bad about their church or their faith or even their lack of faith. Or someone tells a lie about us, and so we want to figure out how to tell something about them, even if we have to maybe bend the truth a little bit to get back at them. Dear friends, our instruction as Christian people is not to do unto others what they have done to us. In fact, it's, it's exactly the opposite. Our instruction as Christian people is what Paul says in Romans chapter 12. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Did you hear Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Daniel does the next right thing. And he does that without concern for himself. He does the next right thing without concern for for the things that are being said about him or the things that are going to be reported about him. He stands strong in his faith. But let me also be crystal clear. There's a price to pay. Daniel's evil colleagues pounce on him. Verse 13 of chapter 6. Then those evil colleagues said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. Daniel's faith is strong. But let's be honest, strong faith is not a guarantee that we're not going to face hard times or or difficult times of struggle, and it doesn't mean we're not going to face danger, and it certainly doesn't mean we're never going to be frightened. So that's what I want to focus on. In these last few minutes of the message, I want to focus on how we can stay strong in our faith and fight against fear as we walk through hard times, and we're going to learn from the inspiring example of Daniel. So are you ready? Now, when we are worshiping together at Concordia, this is where I invite folks to write these down. And you can find the sermon notes. They're posted online, and there are all kinds of ways to get these notes. But maybe by writing these down, it will be helpful to you to remember them and be able to share them with somebody else. Because for one of the the very unusual times in life, there are Millions, if not billions of us, who are in the exact same boat. We're facing frightening times. We're facing struggles. We're having to make adjustments. We're dealing with loneliness. And we don't know what's going to happen. And so how can we fight fear and stay strong? Well, you, if you write these down, we'll have a way to share that with the people that you love and the people that you come in contact with. So point number one, how to fight fear and stay strong? Stay strong. The course. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase before. I remember the first time that I ever heard it. I was, a, I was in high school, and I was going through a really difficult time on the football team. Now, you've got to understand, when I was in high school and college, man, athletics were kind of the center of my universe, and football was the center of my athletic universe. And so whatever was happening in practices and on the field really had a a powerful impact on my sense of well-being and whether things were right in the universe. And I remember there was a time where where things seemed to be going wrong. I was was kind of an overachiever. I wanted to do the right thing. I wanted to practice hard. I wanted to do extra workouts. I wanted to be the best that I could be. And even though I was trying hard and I was doing the best that I could do, the coach really seemed frustrated and angry with me. Really wasn't giving me affirmation at all. In fact, it seemed like he was hypercritical. And I remember talking to my dad and saying, Dad, I don't know what's wrong. 
I don't know how to fix this. I don't know how to do any more or work any harder than I am. And I remember my dad saying to me, son, stay the course. I said, well, what's that mean? He said, keep doing what you're supposed to do. Like Daniel, keep doing the next right thing. Keep striving. Be who you are. You know, it was interesting because I, I stayed the course. I followed the advice of my dad, and, and I, I stuck with what I was supposed to be doing. And it wasn't long after that that I found out it was actually a test. It was a test by the coach to see if, if I would continue to do what I was supposed to do, if I could lead even under adversity. My goodness, dear friends, you and I are in exactly that situation. Are we going to continue to be who we are? Are we going to continue to trust in our God? Are we going to continue to live out what it means to be a Christian person in this difficult time? We must stay the course. You know, if we jump to the end of the story, and many of you know the end of the story, but it's awesome. Because what happens is we find out not only how it all ends up for Daniel, but we find out something about Darius. And what we find out is that Darius loves Daniel. He, he has seen his life. He's seen his faithfulness. He's seen his, his absolutely amazing work. He's not only come to respect him and honor him as, a, as an employee, he's come to love him as a person that he values highly. We come to realize that, that for Darius to throw Daniel into the lion's den is torture. It causes tremendous anguish. I get the sense that Darius is up all night praying to whatever God he prays to, praying that Daniel will be safe, that he will survive the night. Well, lo and behold, when we, when we get to the morning, we discover that Darius, despite a situation that is absolutely Hopeless. I mean, when you get thrown into a hungry lion's den, there is no hope. And we see that at the end of chapter 6, when the satraps and the, the other leaders in government who've conspired against Daniel, they, they suffer the same consequence without a good ending. But we know that Darius knows there is no hope in this situation, yet still he's holding on to hope. Why is that? Dear friends, I think it's the power of Daniel's witness. Daniel's God is not Darius' God. But he's seen Daniel's relationship and he's watched Daniel's life and he's admired Daniel's career and, and he's hoping against hope that Daniel's God will come through. Listen to what happens. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Can you imagine that very pregnant pause? It must have seemed like, like hours passed by and it was probably just seconds, but Darius is waiting and he can't stand to wait any longer to hear Daniel's response. But Daniel answers, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done anything wrong before you, your majesty. Daniel continued to be who he always was. Even in the face of lions, ferocious beasts that could tear him limb from limb, he kept the faith. You know, dear friends, during this trying time, you and I need to stay the course. But what does that look like? What's it look like for you and I during this COVID-19 pandemic? What's it look like for us to stay the course? Well, I think it's pretty simple. Number one, and this is going to be a huge surprise for all of my Concordia family, but we go back to what we've said a thousand times to one another. Be in the Word. Just an example of why that's so important. What do you suppose Daniel was doing and thinking when he was in that lion's den. I bet he was praying, right? I bet he was watching the lions to see what was happening. 
I'll bet he was also thinking about God's word. Because remember, Daniel was devoted to God's word. He was a faithful follower and he was devoted to the scriptures. And so I'll bet that there were scriptures running through Daniel's mind. Scriptures that he had, had learned and he'd read over and over again. Scriptures that were, were stuck in his heart and his mind. And scriptures that God was putting in his recollection to help him through. So for example, in Isaiah chapter 11 it says, The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will die, lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will die, lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. You suppose Daniel was thinking of that verse and thinking to himself, you know what, if God can do all of that, if he can make lions eat straw like the oxen, I wonder if my God's going to protect me. Because I know if he chooses to, he can. Now let's, let's be really upfront. The only way that Daniel could have verses like that running through his mind is if he was in God's word. And to take away any mystery, being in God's word means reading God's word. Taking time every day to read a portion of the scripture. You know, I want to invite you to, to do that. I want you to invite you to, to read just a chapter a day. There are a million different reading programs. And if you have a, a cell phone, one of the easiest ways in the world to be in God's Word, it's what I do daily, is go to the YouVersion Bible app. It's absolutely free. There are all kinds of different versions. But you can simply read a chapter a day or, or join a reading plan and read whatever section. There are all kinds of topics. But be in God's Word. In fact, one other thing I want to invite you to do as a response to this whole COVID-19 pandemic, Pastor Zach and I are going to begin an online Bible study. It's probably going to begin tomorrow. And we're still trying to work out the time, but, but we'll publish that so everybody can see and everybody knows. It'll be repeated at different times throughout the day. But it's an online Bible study about 30 minutes long. There'll be 10, 15 or, or 20 minutes of teaching, and then there'll be an opportunity for conversation and, and feedback. There will also be some of the days when we do ask anything and try to answer the questions that you have to, to share with us about God's Word, about faith, about the Bible. But we're going, something we're going to do on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of each week during this difficult time because we want to help you be in the Word. By the way, if you, want, if you want to be sure that you get more information and all of the details, if you go to concordia.cc, so www.concordia.cc, if you click on the link there for online Bible study, it'll help you sign up. We'll get, take your email address, and then we'll make sure that, that you get all of the details as we finalize our preparations. But we'd love to have you be with us and be in God's Word every single day. The other way that we can, can continue to stay the course is to be in prayer. You know, we talked about this last weekend. As Christian people, we have this amazing confidence, not just that God hears our prayers, not like he just sort of takes a record and sort of has it all there and can stand down and prioritize. We understand that God hears our prayers the way a loving parent hears the sound of their child's voice. He loves us. He adores us. And he longs to hear our voice. He's anxious to hear us when we pray to him. You know, think about Psalm 46, what it says. God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. When I think of those words, I think about the times when my kids crawl up on my lap. Maybe it's a thunderstorm or maybe it's a, a scary part in a Disney movie and, and they feel anxious or they feel afraid and they crawl up in my lap and I put my arms around him. God is our refuge. He's our strength. He's the one we can count on to help us in any situation. Dear friend, you are a beloved child of God and you are always in his heart and always in his mind and he loves to hear the sound of your voice so we've got to stay strong in prayer you know one of the things that we've been inviting you to do since we've been worshiping online is you can send in your prayer requests 
submit those prayer requests by sending them to online at concordia.cc and, and we'll get those requests. We keep all of those prayer requests confidential, but, but you can know for sure that, that I and the other pastors and our prayer team are praying for you. You know, you can also join us in praying Psalm 91 every single day. Or if we want to be like Daniel, we can pray three times a day. Pray that God will deliver us from this, that he will keep his promises in Psalm 91, and we can stay strong in prayer. You know, one more thing that we're going to do is we're going to be setting up, in fact, we're doing it this very day, setting up a prayer line where you can call in and, and you, or you can text in and you can talk to someone who will pray for you. We've got amazing prayer partners at Concordia. And so if you call that number, someone will answer the phone. And if they aren't able to answer the phone that moment, if you leave a message, they will call you back. So just call this number here on the screen. That's our brand new prayer line. So when it comes to to staying strong and fighting against fear, you and I can follow Daniel's example. We can stay the course. Second thing that we can do, we can listen to the authorities. You know, I, I don't know if, if you've thought about it this way, because it's tough. It's tough to be in a semi-quarantine situation, and it's easy to go stir-crazy, and, and life is very different. And sometimes just being together as a family can be really difficult, even though we love our loved ones. But the fact of the matter is, as Christian people, we're also called to honor our authorities, to follow their instruction. In fact, in Romans Chapter 13, it says, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God, for the one in authority is God's servant for your good. What that means is in a time of crisis like these, the authorities, when they're doing the very best they can, and and you know they're doing the best they can, they don't have all the answers, and they don't know the, the end result. They don't understand every twist and turn that we're going to take as a culture and society and world, but they're doing their very best to keep people safe and to keep us healthy. And our obligation as Christians, by God's instruction, is to honor their guidance to us. That means we need to stay home. It means we we need to do the things that they're calling us to do by, by doing only those things that are essential. Now, they're not saying don't go outside and don't get exercise or, or other things, but they're saying maintain social distancing. Be smart and don't put yourself or other people at risk just because it's inconvenient. Dear friends, one of the ways that that you and I can fight fear and stay strong is by listening to our authorities. In fact, the reason we're worshiping online and the reason we made this decision before there was a a shelter-in-place type ordinance is because we wanted to be part of the solution. We wanted to demonstrate that we love our neighbors because we're willing to, to do difficult things and we're willing to change the way we operate in order to protect the life and the well-being of the people in our community. That's not just a congregational activity, friends. That's something that all of us need to do. We need to be part of the solution. You know, when we think about the larger community, that brings me to point number three. So remember, when it comes to fighting fear and staying strong, number one is we stay the course. Number two is we listen to the authorities. Number three is that we must be in community. You would say, what are you talking about? Be in community. What's that even mean? When, you know, the Christian word is fellowship, and when we think about fellowship, we usually think about people getting together and people having time together and praying or laughing or celebrating together. Well, the reality is you and I still must be in community, just not community in direct contact with each other. But my goodness, we live at a time where God has provided the technology and the opportunity for us to have community in the most extraordinary ways. I don't know if you've given thanks for your internet connection, but I have. And I'm praying that that technology continues to function the way it's supposed to function because those internet connections allow us to have community with people who are isolated far away from us. People who are in different cities and different states and around the world. Thanks be to God, we have the ability to to be in community even though we're sheltering in place. You know, it's why it was important for us to celebrate communion today. to have the opportunity as a family of faith to gather around the Lord's table 
And even though it's way different than any time we've ever done it before, even though it's an extreme situation, to still know that God is binding us together through the body and blood of Christ, by the power of his spirit, we're still one family. Loving each other, loving our God, and being lavished by the love and blessing and protection and promises of our Heavenly Father. And when I think about being in community, I think about how important it is for us to look at ways of working to build more community. We need to be be reaching out to people. We need to be taking some time every single day to reach out to people and make sure that they're, they're not isolated, that they're not all by themselves. You know, there are folks who, who are anxious about social interactions and they would never be the first to reach out, but they're just waiting for you to send that text message or to make that call, to even send them a card. Say, I'm thinking about you and I love you. What can I pray for? Maybe even how can I help? You know, one of the things that I've loved are some of the stories from our staff members, and I think this is happening all across our society. But even though people can't gather for parties and celebrations the, the way they normally do, one of our staff members posted a story last night about the fact that they were walking with their family. And as they were walking down the street of their neighborhood, even though oftentimes when they go for a walk, they're the only ones out there, this night the street was filled with people. Now they were all keeping their distance, right? They were social distancing. But they were all out there and they were talking to one another across the street. And they were having interactions and, and there was a sense of community. A sense of being in this together. That didn't happen before. In fact, I asked I ask some of our staff to send in pictures of these kinds of things. Take a look at these pictures. I think that's just cool. You know, one of the other things that has come up are all of the ways, amazing ways, that people have been in community by helping and loving each other. You know, we set up a, a website called 21daystogether.com and there's a Facebook page and there's an Instagram page. It's a great way. If you haven't seen it yet, you really need to go to one of those pages or to the website. Watch the devotions. But there's a segment that's posted at noon Eastern time and it's always about how people are helping each other. And there was an amazing story that actually came out of the neighborhood right around Concordia. It goes like this. My next door neighbor is on lockdown with pneumonia. I asked her if I could get anything, get anything from the store and she gave me her list. I got myself a few things and hers and asked the checker to do two separate charges as I was helping my neighbor. I went to my purse and realized I left my wallet at home. I told her to please set aside these items. I'd run home and I'd be right back. At the front of the line was standing the manager of the store. That manager stepped up and paid for my items. I said that that was okay, that I'd be right back. And she said, no, you're helping your neighbor. As I stood there in tears, she had no idea that I am a part of the travel industry and have zero income. The kindness shown by her will be forever in my heart. I don't know your name, but thank you from the bottom of my heart. Dear friends, you and I can reach out to someone. We can let them know that we care. We can can rise above this circumstance and and help each other. We have the ability to respond to this COVID-19 outbreak and all of its resulting consequences in the most extraordinary way. We can fight fear and stay strong by following this example of Daniel and, and doing the right thing, doing the next right thing, and loving the people around us. But remember this, above everything else, remember this. You are never alone. God is with you. He loves you. And the reality is there is nothing in all of creation that can cause you to be separated from God. He is always with you because there is nothing in all of creation he can't conquer. And while we may not know his timing, I promise you, 
God's got this. And we will stand in awe of the miracles that he accomplishes in our sight. Dear friends, God bless you. And as you walk through this week, I know there'll be struggles. But know, above all else, God is with you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that you are with us. While we can't even necessarily understand how that is, we know that you are a God who keeps his promises and that nothing can separate us from you. So, Father, give us the courage of Daniel. Help us to fight the fear that's welling up all around us and even welling up in us. Help us to fight that fear and stay strong and stay the course and be who we are. Sons and daughters, children of the Most High God called to live and love this world. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. And as you leave this place, as you continue on in exile together, shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the message of life. Amen.